Uh, hello everyone, my name is Elijah David, minister of the Twelfth Hour. First started Sabbatarian congregation. I was out the Twelfth Hour in every year, Texas. Today is uh, July the 7th, 2013, on the 29th day of the fourth month, 2017. We will start our first service today with a song entitled, Heaven Came Down and Glory Fill My Soul. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I'd wandered in darkness away, the Yashua, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend, he met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling the joy I am telling, he made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away. And my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Only oh, the Spirit with light from above into your family divine. Justified fully through Calvary's love. Oh, understanding is mine, and the transaction so quickly was made, when as a sinner I came, took of the offering the joy I am for he saved me, oh, praise his dear name. Heaven came down, and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down, and glory filled my soul. Now I've a hope that will surely endure, after the passing of time, I have a future in heaven for sure. There in those mansions sublime, and it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believe, riches eternal and blessings supernal from His precious hand I receive. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory. Hello everyone, once again it's Elijah David. We're going to continue our series on uh, the world yesterday, today, and tomorrow by the V.T. Harker. We're on page uh, about 39, and we're uh, on the part where it says about the sea, uh, locates the territory of the five beasts. One, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Bear, Leopard, Grisha, Alexander, uh, Pagan Rome at the cross. And this is the second phase of him, so these two makes number four. Number five beast, leopard light beast. All of these camped out of the sea from the old country. But now here we have it, this little two horned beast, Revelation 13, that camped in the earth. Uh, he uh, was born right here in the United States. The scarlet-colored beast 
that's an image to this beast right here, that this little fellow made made this image to this right here. This is the United States government. George Bush Jr., 2001, 2009. He's the one that developed this image to the beast to give it to this woman that succeeded him in the presidency in 2009. All one the same, the fall, a beast and a false prophet. Okay, uh, he represents this beast right here. This little fella is a representative of this beast. He's a mouthpiece for this beast. But he uh, has the appearance of a lamb. He's uh, meek, but he has the voice of a dragon. Speaks as a dragon. Okay, so prophecy must be fulfilled. And here we go. And now let's start reading about the sea, which means the old country. The earth means the United States. Wilderness, Gentile world, in uh, uh, in the United States. Okay, that's where the scarlet colored beast camp in the wilderness here in the United States. <laughs> and uh, Babylon, the mystery Babylon woman uh, sits. She has her headquarters on this beast at Washington D.C. at the White House. This is where her headquarters are at. So, she picked a good place to establish her headquarters. I thought maybe she'd try to establish them in Jerusalem, but no. Uh, this is where the beast came to, Revelation 13. He camped out of the sea. The image was made to this beast that represents this beast here, a continuation of this beast right here. And so, this beast, pagan Rome at the cross, has <laughs> three phases. One, two, three. 538 A.D. to 1798, 1798 to 2009, and 2009 to now uh, is this scarlet colored beast. These two right here has occupied the White House since 2009. All right. Now it says down. So the sea, the old country, uh, Italy, Vatican, Rome, locates the territory of the five beasts. Since in the realm of the nature the sea is uh, uh, in the storehouse, home of the waters, therefore in the realm of the symbols, the sea must be the birthplace of the nations, the old country, the for the five beasts, the lion, the bear, the leopard, and the nondescript beast, along with the leopard-like beast, right here, 1798, that came from the Vatican, coming from the sea, here's the sea right here, the ocean, old country, this is where the Mystery Babylon started out too, and then she always said made us way across the waters, and she come across the waters and landed over here on this shore, and now she's uh, occupying the White House today, for her time has come. Okay, so coming from the city notes that they represent kingdoms that have arisen in the old country, just as history confirmed. And as much as the sea locates the territory of this beast, obviously then, the earth locates the two-horned beast's domain. As the birthplace of the nation is symbolized by the sea, then the earth, the opposite of the sea, locates the domain of the two-horned beast away from the old country. But to find exactly which one of the new uh, country's governments extends, for well, we must consider the characteristics of the beast itself, its two crownless horns, the two non-royalist rulers, while their lamb-like appearance forecasts useful innocency, uh, and this having the power to dictate who should buy and who should not shows that he represents a nation that leads in the controlling of the world's wealth and industry. Here he is, right here. Uh, started, his power started in 2001. Washington, D.C. George W. Bush, Jr., President. Antipical Nebuchadnezzar. Mystery Babylon. Concealed right here. Okay, now it says that uh, 
For the United States of America is the only government in the world that answers unto all these specifications. For it originated in the New World, the Earth, the United States of America, as I call it in the noun format, Unity States of the America, has a whole different meaning than U.S. Uh, District of Columbia, uh, United States. It originated in uh, the New World, the Earth, not in the territories of the ancient world, the sea. It is the only government which is lamb-like, youthful, and Christian established upon the ancient principles of the peace and liberty, having two non-loyalist ruling parties, crownless horns, the Republic and, Republican and the Democratic Party. Look here. Okay. And uh, as a symbolical sea and earth along with the beast, characteristics perfectly locate the abode of each beast, Likewise, a wilderness locates the scarlet colored beast's domain, right here. The scarlet colored beast, the wilderness. By contrast, a wilderness is the opposite of a vineyard. And you know, Isaiah 5 7 says, A vineyard of the Yahweh of hosts is in the house of Israel. And since a vineyard, Yahweh's house, is figurative of the home of Elohim's people, Isaiah 5 7, the wilderness can only represent the home of the Gentiles. Keep in mind now, Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2, the Gentiles are our brethren. They are our genetically uh, blood brothers. <coughs> okay. For the beast being in the wilderness indicates that at the time it comes into the existence, there is a vineyard. Keep in mind also that the Gentiles, our blood brothers, come from the ten tribes of Israel when they went into captivity in the north in 721 B.C. Uh, and, uh, uh, under the Assyrian yoke. And that's where the, uh, they went into the north, further uh, from where they were at, the ten tribes, and they intermarried with uh, the Assyrian heathen, and then the heathen emerged as uh, bro half-brothers uh, to the ten tribes of Israel, designating them as Gentiles. That's who showed up in Jerusalem uh, with the disciples and Yahshua in, in that day. They all showed up there. And they, that's the reason why they joined the house of Israel, because they were Israelites indeed. Even though they were from Syria, and they were from all over the country, nevertheless they ended up in, Jer in Jerusalem, and Jerusalem at that time was designated as the vineyard of the Yahweh of hosts, the house of Israel, headquarters. Obviously it would be superfluous to designate the wilderness if the whole world is wilderness. <clears throat> For full details concerning these symbolical beasts, read the Shepherd Rod, Volume 2. For the certainty that both uh, the vineyard and the wilderness are in the existence at the same time, shows first that Babylon writing, uh, ruling uh, the beast, okay, Babylon, Mr. Babylon, Obama and Company, Riding and ruling the base. First, he uh, rode all the churches, got them under his control here in the United States, and now he transferred over here. The reason why uh, this uh, this is a woman, and our president is a man, is because it's his religion. That's what it is. The Muslim religion, uh, their god is Allah, which is a female goddess. That's in their folklore, and that's also in their Quran. So. Their God is not a male, like ours is, Yahweh Elohim. Their God is a female goddess, and she goes by the name of Allah. That's why we have the Muslim religion represented by this woman, Mystery Babylon. That's what makes her a Mystery Babylon, because she's nothing but uh, a daughter of Catholicism. That's all she is, born in the 7th century A.D. Uh, with Mohammed being a Catholic monk coming out of the Catholic Church in the 7th century A.D. and went out and formed his own religion upon the basic principles of the Catholic Church. Okay? And uh, so it says, for, uh, the certainty, for the certainty that both the vineyard and the wilderness are in the existence at the same time shows first that Babylon, writing, ruling the beast, 
reigns only over the wilderness Gentile world. Now folks, uh, Texas is designated as a place of Yahweh's vineyard, sit up here in Liberty Hill, Texas. Now we have plenty of Gentiles uh, has come from all over into the United States and they're here in Texas as well. And so Texas is your geographical location for the land of Goshen, the best land in the land of Egypt when Joseph was down there as governor and he ended up bringing his father and all of his brothers and all their household back down into Egypt and his father came down and spent the last 17 years of his life in the land of Goshen, the best of Egypt. Well, Texas is in the United States and the United States is called spiritual Egypt. Texas is the land of Goshen in the United States. Do you get the point? And there were plenty of Egyptians in Egypt, but whenever Goshen was set aside for uh, for a um, for Joseph and his his father and his household Jacob, then there was no Egyptians allowed to cross over those borders into the land of Goshen, even though it was in their uh, the territory in Egypt. Because for number one, the Israelites are sheep herders, they're shepherds, and it's an abomination to even mention the word shepherd down in Egypt. And so they held that as an abomination and they hated shepherds. So therefore, even though they were told to bow down to Joseph and uh, bow the knee to him, Pharaoh commanded it so, even though they served Joseph, they hated him. They hated all of the Israelites. So whenever Pharaoh set the borders of Goshen, they're in Egypt for the household of Israel, then that was called the land of Israel in Egypt because Jacob's name had been changed to Israel. When he came down there, it says in the Bible, and so Israel came into Egypt where he abode for 17 years until he died. And then you can go read about his death there in Genesis 49 where he blessed his 12 sons before he died down in the land of Goshen which was called Israel in the midst of uh, Egypt. All right. The certainty that both the vineyard and the wilderness are in the existence at the same time shows first that Babylon right in ruling the beast right here. This is where we're at today, folks. We've already graduated from here to here. In Obama's first administration from 2009 to 2013, uh, he ruled here over all churches. But in his sec second inauguration, he transfers to the beast here in his second term. This is where he's at now. Alright, it says that uh, from it are Elohim's people called to go into the vineyard, the, the kingdom restored. Oh my! Now, when you go to Zechariah 14, you read about that great battle in these last days, vying for the supremacy of the, uh, of the, of the world. Right over there in the heart of Jerusalem, where all nations come against Jerusalem to battle, it says Judah shall also fight at, at Jerusalem. As Zechariah 14, 14, the house of Judah is the house of David that also fights at Jerusalem during that great battle, which is just right in front of us, folks. That's the reason why uh, Yahshua said through his uh, prophet Jeremiah in a prophecy for the last days, for this time, Jeremiah 51, 19, uh, 18, 19, and 20, he says, y You are my battle axe and weapons of war, and with thee will I thresh the nation. Let's go read the prophecy from Jeremiah on that, and let's get a more uh, clear uh, uh, view of it. Hopefully we can find it right quick. It says, um, starting with verse 18, They are vanity, the work of errors, and the time of their visitation they shall perish, for the portion of Jacob is not like them. For he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. Where have you ever heard that rod before? Shepherd's rod. I've been a shepherd's rod uh, believer for 43 years. Born in the Adventist church, uh, uh, I, died, I died in the world of the Adventist church. And I teach all of the doctrines taught by the Adventists, the Vedian Adventists, and the Branch Davidian Seventh day Adventists. I only teach the the five, uh, the, the, all the seven doctrines that belong to the five angels' messages that were started with the seven-day Adventist. I've been associated with the Shepherd's Rod since 1948. 
for a total of 65 years. Have known them personally and studied with them all through the years. I accepted the message, uh, their message in 1970, but in no way did I ever uh, distance myself from the Mother Church of Seventh-day Adventists because that's where I was born. Seventh-day Adventist Church actually produces the Elijah, not, not the Davidians. Uh, they come at the end of the Davidian Trail, all right, in 2002, Elijah does. But he was born in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and that's where the prophecy was born, in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. That's where I was born. And I am the antipical Elijah today, or I am in the spirit and power of the Elijah with the Elijah's message. Okay. All you have to do is just listen to these messages every day. I try to put up two a day, if at all possible. Uh, one hour uh, CDs upon my website, 11thhourcall.com. Click on my audio archives to hear these messages and more. Okay. So he says, Thou art my battle axe here in uh, Jeremiah 51 19. Talking about this house of David, tribe of Judah. He says, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nation, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot, and his rider with thee also will I break in pieces man and woman, and with thee will I break in pieces old and young, and with thee will I break in pieces the, the young man and the maid. And guess what? This is the house of David, with Elijah at the head of it, with the, uh, with the beautiful name of David, Antipical David, and the spirit and power of the Elijah, just like John the Baptist was. He remained John the Baptist to everyone, known to everyone as John the Baptist. But Yeshua said he is the Elijah that has come to restore all things. Okay, so uh, John the Baptist in the spirit and power of Elijah, Elijah David in the spirit and power of the Elijah. Malachi 4, 5. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. And with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen, and with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. Who's this? His battle axe, house of David, tribe of Judah, lawgiver. Why? How is he able to? Because Yahshua is the one that's leading the way for this. Elijah David is just his visible servant that's taking orders from the invisible King Yahshua that is here present until we come to completely pure sanctification and stand at 144,000 uh, with the Lamb on Mount Zion and then we can, we'll be able to look on his face and see him visibly. But until then we can't. And I will render unto you, uh, and I will render unto you Babylon, now here is this house of David, says so I will render unto you Babylon, right here, and to all the inhabitants of the Chaldea, all their evil that they have done in Zion, Jerusalem, house of David, this is where David's, uh, how, it's called the city of David, okay? In your sight, saith Yahweh, Behold, I'm against the old destroying mountain. Who's that destroying mountain? I'll show it to you right quick. I'm against the old destroying mountain. This destroying mountain represents the Seventh-day Adventist Church and those Davidian daughters of hers, those three feeding pastures, Bashan, Carmel, and Gilead from 1844, uh, uh, 2003. That's how long this mountain was on the scene. I will, I'm against you, O destroying mountain, saith Yahweh, which destroyeth all the earth, and the earth and the United States. So Yahweh, Yahweh brought this mountain forth here in the United States, in the earth, and now he said, I give her 158 years to, to prove herself, and he said, Lo and behold, she completely did the works of Satan and apostatized and wouldn't do any of my commands and so forth. And so I'm against her now. And he says, uh, And I will stretch out mine hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks and will make thee a burnt mountain. Seventh day Adventist, you already done this. She's powerless in the world today. She's completely taken over by the Jesuit Catholics and there's no way she can rise again. <coughs> And it says, And they shall not take of thee a stone, not one stone, 
from this mount. For a corner, nor a stone for the foundation, but thou shalt be desperate forever, saith the Yahweh. Alright, and now we go to Zechariah chapter uh, uh, 4, and we read verse 7, it says, Who art thou, O great mountain? Who are, who are you, Seventh-day Adventist, Mount Bashan? Who are you? He said, uh, before Zerubbabel, which is the governor of Judea, which is antitypical David, huh, head, head of the tribe of Judah, uh, the house of David, today, in the 12th parabolic hour, says, uh, right there it says, um, um, Who art thou, O great mountain, said the day Adams, before Zerubbabel? Now that's the Davidians also included in this. The Davidian Seventh Day Adventists were also part of this mountain. They represent the mama. They all go by the same name: Davidian Seventh Day Adventists, Seventh Day Adventists, Davidian Seventh Day Adventists, and Branch Davidian Seventh Day Adventists. The three feeding pastures, respectively, one following the other, from 1844 to 2002. So it says uh, that. Uh, <clears throat> So there in Zechariah 4, 7, it says, uh, And as soon as it becomes a plan, he said, Thou shalt become a plan, I'm going to plan you off, this little stone the house of David hewn out of this mountain. And I told you I was born in this mountain, seven day of this mountain. This is who I represent, this little stone. I was born in this mountain in 1938, 75 years ago. He always been preparing me now uh, for 43 years directly, and indirectly he's been preparing me for 65 years. He called me to this post at the age of 10 in 1948 when I first met and studied with the Shepherd God people. I was called to that post, what I'm occupying today. 65 years I've been on course with, with this calling. All right, now it says here in Zechariah chapter 4, it says, Who art thou, O great mountain, seven devils, the bidding seven devils, and branch the bidding seven devils? I was with the branch the bidding seven devils from 1970 to 2003 at Gilead Center in Kermit, Texas, out there in the desert, in the wilderness. I spent 33 years with them people. But I got my education because I had the raw material and I studied it all through the years while I was with the branch. For I've been now 43 years directly with the Isaac Branch Movement, which is the third feeding patch for Seventh-day Adventists. That's all it is. Just what we call glorified Seventh-day Adventists. So it says that, uh, <clears throat> Who art thou, O great mountain, before his rubble, thou shalt become a plant, and, and uh, he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, Grace, grace unto it. Who's the headstone? What does it say there in Ephesians 2, 19 and 20, 21? That Yahshua is the headstone. He's the cornerstone. Okay. So he's going to bring forth Yahshua to be the head of this mountain after it's planned out. Because if this mountain takes its place, this one right here now goes into a mountain and fills the whole earth. And what mountain is this house of David's little stone, Daniel 2, 44, 45, go into? All you got to do is go see that mountain, uh, the, two, uh, the two brass mountains. And uh, if we can find it here, I'll show it to you. But uh, I don't suppose I can find it right now. Right here, I can too. Here it is right here. The first brass mountain, the Apostolic Church. Uh, at the cross, Yahshua raised this brass mountain up. It's actually one brass mountain, these two right here. They were just divided by this very great valley during the Dark Ages. But this is this brass mountain that that little stone here now, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, that represents the, the house of David that grows into a mountain and fills the whole earth. This is that mountain it grows into. This second brass mountain, which is called the Kingdom of Glory today. This is the everlasting kingdom of glory that will never, never uh, be destroyed in our, in our pass away. It says so in the prophecy of Daniel 2, 44 and 45. It says, In the days these kings shall the Yahweh of heaven raise up a uh, kingdom that shall never be destroyed or left to other people, but it shall stand forever. This is it right here. Okay. Now, as we continue, we're getting about halfway through our study here. 
we are going to now uh, go back to our regular reading here, taken from uh, the wilderness. A uh, little case uh, started to be here in that trap of Beachy Hollis, the world yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We're on page uh, 40. It says, uh, the for the United States of America is the only government in the world that answers to all these specifications. It originated in a new world, the earth, not in the territories of the ancient world, the city, for it is the only government which is lamb-like. Okay, now we got to get back to our lamb-like here, which is lamb-like, a little two-horned fish, okay. He came up in the earth when this nation was born here, uh, this little lamb-like beast here in 1776 at the Revolutionary War for, a, for a, to start the United States on its road to dependency, and it's called the Great Republic at the time. Okay. So it says, as a symbolical tree and earth along with the beast characteristics uh, perfectly locate the abode of each beast, likewise, the wilderness locates the uh, locates the scarlet colored beast's domain, and we then showed you that. It's in the Gentile world. Okay, away from the vineyard. The vineyard, y'all have horses here in Texas. And so uh, the Gentile world is a, is, a, is a wilderness. Okay. By contrast, a wilderness is the opposite of a vineyard. And since a vineyard is figurative of the home of Elohim's people, Isaiah 5, 7, the wilderness can only represent the home of the Gentile. The beast being in the wilderness indicates that at the time it comes into the existence there is a vineyard. Obviously it would be superfluous to designate the wilderness if the whole world is in the wilderness. So this woman showed up here in Washington DC. She showed up here in 2009 with the election of our president. And uh, the, the vineyard had already been established since 2003 here in the Liberty Hill, Texas. So the vineyard is established. That's what it's talking about. So it says, uh, the beast being in the wilderness indicates that at the time it comes into existence in 2009, there is a vineyard, which is the house of David, the house of the Yahweh, Isaiah 5, 7, in the Liberty Hill, Texas. It's already been established. Okay, obviously it would be superfluous uh, to designate the wilderness if the whole world is a wilderness. For the full details concerning uh, these uh, symbolical beasts, read the Shepherd God Volume 2. Okay, for the certainty that both the vineyard, the house of the Yahweh, and the wilderness are in the existence at the same time shows first that uh, Babylon, riding, ruling the beast, reigns only over the wilderness Gentile world. Okay, meaning that she can never rule over the vineyard. In other words, she can never rule over the house of David. Because Yahshua has come and taken his seat upon the throne of David, and that's one reason why she can never rule over the kingdom, uh, everlasting kingdom of David. Okay. So it says, um, And in the days of these kings shall the Elohim of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left unto other people. But it shall break in peace and consume all these kings, and it shall stand forever. Daniel 2, 44, 45. For the subject of the vineyard now necess necessitates the analysis of uh, the twelve star crowned woman and her remnant. Now folks, this will be very interesting to understand this. Well, it is self-evident that the woman, Babylon, is of the counterfeit of the woman that brought forth the son of the Elohim, Revelation 12, 1, of whom the scripture said, and when the dragon saw that he was cast on, unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And unto the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and time and half a time from the face of the serpent. Revelation 12, 13, and 14. Okay, let us continue here now. It says, uh, 
And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child, and unto the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time on the face of the serpent. Revelation 12, 13, and 14. Now here you are. This woman, the wings of a great eagle. This wing starts at the Garden of Eden here, this end here. And this one here reaches to the end of the Revelation, the 6,000 year period. These two wings, uh, this wing spans the Old Testament, this wing spans the New Testament. One pure woman, 12 stars, 12 uh, patriarchs of Jacob, his 12 sons, 12 apostles had to cross, and 144,000 a day. That's what those 12 stars represent. Three different periods of time, and three uh, different uh, uh, groups of twelve. Okay, to begin with, we see from this uh, scripture that the woman left her vineyard, homeland, Palestine, and went into the Gentile world after her child was born, that is, in her Christian period when the dragon persecuted her through the instrumentality of the Jews, Acts chapter 8, verse 1, uh, 13, verse 46, 50 verse 51. Next we see that after she uh, uh, was uh, there, for some times conditions became such as to hinder her uh, longer nourishing herself and that it therefore became necessary that she be nourished by someone for a time and times and half a time. Now time is one year, times is two years, and half a time is six months, half a year. So we have three and a half years here. Three and a half years uh, equates into 42 months. 42 months uh, mathematically translates into 1260 days, a day for a year, 1260 years. This prophecy has this prophecy there in the dark age, starting in 538 AD. Okay? So to, to begin with, we see uh, from this scripture. That the woman left her vineyard, homeland, Palestine, and went into the Gentile world after her child was born. Okay, who was her child? Yahshua, the Messiah, born in uh, uh, 4000 BC. And that is uh, in her Christian period when the dragon persecuted her through the instrumentality of the Jews. Next, we see that after she was there for a some time, conditions became such as to hinder her longer nourishing herself, and that it therefore became necessary that she be nourished by someone for the time and times and half a time, and that would be in the wilderness of the 538 to 1798, when the Catholic Church was raging with the Inquisition uh, and persecution for 1260 years during that time. To begin with, we see from this scripture that the woman left her vineyard Homeland Palestine. Okay, we then said that. All right, now it says three and one half years. It says uh, after Yahshua's resurrection, the church left Palestine or the vineyard, and while she was in the Gentile world, in the wilderness, okay, the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman forced the heathen to be baptized into the Christianity and to join the church, that he uh, might cause her to be carried away, uh, heathenized, of the flood, Revelation 12, 15. While thus flooded, she had to be nourished, sustained by the Yahshua, because many of her followers were heathenized, and nearly all of those who were not were carried unto their death by the flood. So had he not nourished her, I kept her in existence by a miracle. The church would have uh, perished during uh, those dark ages of the religion. True, she had been able to nourish herself since the Reformation, but the unconverted flood are still in her midst. She has, however, this promise of the rescue. And the earth helped the woman and opened uh, her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth, Revelation 12, 16. 
Paul literally stated the unconverted who are now in the midst of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He tells us making a statement back in the 1930s now. He was just fresh out of the Adventist Church, starting his own with the Rod Movement, a continuation of the Seventh-day Seven Adventist, of the unfolding of the scroll of prophecy, are to be slain and buried. For the converted are then to be taken into the everlasting kingdom of the David, of the kingdom of heaven here on earth, which y'all should sit upon the throne of that kingdom, incidentally. That's uh, they're coming to that uh, after Yahshua takes his place upon that throne here in these uh, in this twelfth parabolic hour that we're in right now. And this is gonna be one of the imminent events that uh, that is lurking on the horizon right now. That and the hundred and forty four thousand to appear. Then will the dragon be wroth with the woman and make uh, and make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of the Elham and have the testimony of Yahshua Messiah, Revelation 12, 17. So it says, uh, stir it unto fury over purification, the dragon will make war with the remnant of her seed. Against her personally though, he will not war, because her communicants, the 144,000, the first truth, Revelation 7, 3 to 8, that's 144,000, and Revelation 14, 4, that's 144,000. Those who go first into the everlasting kingdom of the heaven here on earth, which is headed up by the everlasting uh, throne of David, where Yahshua is sitting upon that throne, stands with the Lamb, the King, on the Mount S-I-O-N. Notice it says S-I-O-N here instead of Z-I-O-N. S-I-O-N denotes a geographical exact location here on earth, otherwise it's spelled Mount Zion, Z-I-O-N, Revelation 14.1. For his polished crown, thus being the rulers of the tribes, they are symbolized by the crown woman, and being in their own land, they are protected from the dragon, uh, who consequently persecutes only women, those who are left behind, or outside the borders of the vineyard of Israel that are still in those other nations, you will read Zechariah 14 for this, who are still in the Babylon's domain, in the Gentile world in other words, but who are finally called out of her, Revelation 18.4. For the full particulars of the Revelation 12, read the Shepherd Rod, volume 2, page 64 to 82. For the first fruits of the kingdom come as a result of the shaking, for the separation of the church, as is demonstrated by the parables of the net and of the field, the good fish are removed from the net, the church, and put into the vessels of the kingdom, Matthew 13, 48, and the wheat is taken from among the tares and put into the barn, the kingdom, Matthew 13, 30. And as bad fish, they are cast away, as tares, they are burned. For a detailed study of the harvest, read track number three, the judgment and the harvest. Okay, now I want to point out here these uh, these fish that are are caught out of the out of the water, and the bad ones that throw back into the water represents the Gentile brethren of the house of Israel. But the tares are representatives of the house of Israel directly. That's reading and they're burned. The others are just cast back out into Babylon of the Gentile world. The second fruits, however, those that are still in the Babylon after purification are taken from among the bad, Revelation 18, uh, 4, rather than the bad from among the good, Matthew 13, 49. For the dragon's warning against him is occasioned by their having the testimony of Yahshua, the spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19, 10. All right. By becoming commandment keepers, uh, instead of worshippers of the beast and his image, the dragon's aim is to keep them from coming out of the Babylon and thus from going into the rapidly growing kingdom. Then it is, though, that the world uh, shall behold all of the Elohim's people coming out of Babylon's dominion into their own land, uh, back into the land of Israel, ultimately across the waters, going east from here as a crow flies. Okay, now as it says there in Revelation 19.10, I want to turn to you and read it directly to you about the spirit of prophecy as a, a Yahshua. We're going to show you something here that you need to understand more clearly. It says that um, 
And I fell at his feet, talking about that angel that came and gave this information to John the Baptist. He said, I fell at his feet. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant. I'm just one of your fellow servants that was sent from heaven to bring you a message from the Yahshua and his father Yahweh. See thou do it not, I am thy fellow ser servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of the Yahshua. Worship the Elohim for the testimony of the Yahshua is in the spirit or with the spirit of the prophecy. It's not the, uh, it says here in the scripture, uh, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. No, the testimony of the Yahshua is with the spirit of the prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is one thing, Yahshua is another. The spirit of prophecy comes from one of those seven spirits that has gone out from the Father of, uh, of Yahweh. He's in charge of the seven spirits. It says so in Revelation 5 and Zechariah 3 9. It says so. Yahshua is with one of the spirits that's uh, the spirit of prophecy. Okay? And so if you want more confirmation on that, you go to 2 Peter 1 19, and uh, that gives you some pretty good insight also on. Uh, this uh, spirit of prophecy and Yahshua being separate from it. Let's go look at it. Uh, Second Peter uh, 1.19. I believe that's what it is. It says, We have also a more sure word of the prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Now this light, Yahshua says in John 14, I am the light of the world. Okay, and the disciple says he was that light that came into the world and, uh, and, uh, and the world comprehended it not. So it says right here, we have also a more sure word of the prophecy. Sure word of the prophecies in these charts that I've been given to you all morning. It says, whereunto you do will that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. If you don't understand these prophecies, it's because uh, you're in a dark place. Now that you have an opportunity to see this light, study it, pray it prayerfully, uh, uh, study these tapes, and go back over them and listen to them over and over again. I have them on my, on my uh, website, posted every day. You can upload them, you can download them. <clears throat> Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Hopefully let's read that again. We have also a more sure word of the prophecy that you do will for unto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star, and Yahshua is the day star, okay, arise in your hearts. Folks, if you will allow it, this uh, truth I'm teaching you, I'm teaching you about how this day star can arise in your heart starting right now. Okay, and how you can uh, contact us and and we'll put you on our mailing list if we need to, to keep, in to keep you posted. But most of all, we post everything on our website on a daily basis. We have our publications. I've written a book for the last seven, eight years. Uh, that's uh, called uh, the Kingdom of Heaven, uh, From Eden to Eden. I've written a song entitled From Eden to Eden, uh, 38 verses long. And so it all goes together. And uh, when you click on uh, my website, you'll go to the publications bar and you'll find out where my book is at. It may be all up there by itself. And you can read the genealogy about uh, who, who were the important players since uh, 18, uh, 1500, starting with Martin Luther, as the angel of the sacred candlestick, Smyrna. And read about the reformers. And I have it all in my book, showing their time, they, what they came forth, what they represented, the doctrine they represented. Connects you right up to 1844 in L.G. White, this uh, angel of the seventh candlestick led us in, little Advent band. Connects you up with all of the key players since 1844, Jones and Wagner, uh, Taylor G. Bunch, Adventist, Emmett Andreas, an Adventist minister during the uh, 1920s, uh, uh, 1890 to 1930, and then picked up with Vicki Hollis, Seventh-day Adventist Sabbath school teacher in the Adventist ranks in 1929 when he got this message of the Shepherd God. And so they pushed him on out of the church and he had to go and, and continue on with this message. And he started him a, 
a, a, a church location, a branch of the Seventh-day Adventists is what it is, it's called the Davidian Seventh-day Adventist, and then uh, I joined uh, the branch of the Shepherd God in 1970, a continuation of all that, called the, uh, the, the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventist. So it says, uh, the, day uh, the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. So if you will take a hold of these prophecies and understand them, then the day star is arising in your heart today. Okay, we're rocking along there pretty good now. Uh, let's continue now with our main uh, study. <laughs> it says, uh, Well, the first fruits of the kingdom came as a result of the shaking, uh, the separation in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and it's demonstrated by the parables of the net and the field. Okay, I'm going to give you that. It says, uh, So it says, The dragons born against them is occasioned by their having the testimony uh, of the Yahshua with the spirit of the prophecy, Revelation 19.10, by becoming commandment keepers, that's in, I'm talking about commandment keepers, when you want to know what commandments to keep, go to Leviticus 23. All of the feast holy days is right there. We start with holy days. You have 70 holy days a year to keep. You have a new moon, you have a, a Passover, feast of unleavened bread, the first and last day is holy. You have the Pentecost, you have the Atonement, and then you have the Feast of Tabernacles in the fall, and the seventh month, and the first day of that is a holy, and the last day of that is holy, and then you have 12 new moon Sabbaths to keep, and our new moon starts tonight, and uh, we're right here, uh, I believe it's on uh, the, the 8th, yeah, our new moon starts tonight here on the 8th uh, of uh, July, and uh, we keep that once a month, at the appointed time, that's the holy day, Matthew, I mean Leviticus uh, 23, uh, 24 gives us the authority for that. It says it's a holy day. Okay, to Israel, that is. So if you want to know what all these commandments uh, keepers, what they keep, instead of uh, worshipers of the beast in his image, in other words, all those false uh, uh, counterfeit system of, of Protestantism today, and especially the Catholic Church, for the dragon's aim is to keep them from coming out of the Babylon and thus from going into the rapidly growing kingdom. Then it is, though, that the world uh, shall be hold all of Elohim's people coming out of the Babylon's dominion into their homeland. Uh, for the truth uh, now being clearly established that the scarlet colored beast, uh, let's go back to our beast. Now we've got to get back to that. Uh, no, let's see. I guess we better go this way. The scarlet colored beast right here. Revelation 17, Mystery Babylon. Okay. It is a symbol of the dominion over which reigns Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots. It follows that her boundaries will extend as far as the boundaries of the nations that bow down unto her authority. Therefore the call come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sin, that you receive not of her plagues, Revelation 18.4, is a call for them to come out of her dominion, that they shall not end her sin, nor receive of her plagues. Those who respond to the Yahshua's bidding must have a sin-free place to go into, uh, where they may dwell safely, and this place today would be this uh, nation, this great republic of the nation of Texas, uh, that has been set aside just for this time and for this prophecy. Uh, though uh, there be neither bars nor gates around it, Ezekiel 38, 11, that's in the western hemisphere, that is. Unto this haven they shall be brought forth out of the nations. Go read Ezekiel 33 for the prophecy on that. And there they shall dwell safely, all of them, Ezekiel 38, 8. So all thy children shall be taught of the Yahshua, and great shall be the peace of thy children, Isaiah 54, 13. Elohim's people at that time can no more serve the Yahshua in Babylon and in Egypt than they could have in the days of Ezra or Moses, for when the plagues are poured upon the Babylon as the fire and the brimstone are poured upon the Sodom and Gomorrah, 
then if they be uh, living among the whirlings in Babylon, they cannot no more escape the damage of the plagues than Lot could have survived the fire had he stayed in the Sodom. So all who want to escape the foretold ruin, verily, must come out of the Babylon as Lot and his family came out of the Sodom. And it shall uh, therefore come to pass in the last days. We've got about three minutes before uh, our sermon is over with. And so we're going to uh, start wrapping this down. Yeah, it says, And it shall therefore uh, come to pass uh, in the last days that the mountain of the Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. This is a mountain of the house of, of, of David. And shall be exalted above the hills. That's all, all religions, all religious ch church organizations around the world. And all nations shall flow unto all nations. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up into the mountain of the Yahweh, unto the house of the Elohim of the Jacob, and he will teach us of his way. And we will walk in his paths, for out of the Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Yahshua from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into the plowshares, and their spears into the pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Isaiah 2, 2 to 4. Read also Isaiah 11, 11, 12, 15, and 16. Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and will give them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land, upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king unto them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all, neither shall they defile themselves uh, any more with their idols, nor with the detestable thing, nor with uh, any of their transgression. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and uh, their children, so uh, children forever, and my servant David, uh, the one that's speaking to you right now, shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them, and they will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Yahshua, who sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Okay, it says, In the confirmation of the truth that Elohim's people are going to become a kingdom, Ezekiel prophecies of a new division of the land. The prophecy presents a division of the land entirely different from that of the Joshua's time, and that's in Joshua 17. This brings the to us to this hour contest at the 11th hour call, and that's number 11, click on the audio archives, hear this message in more. We will close uh, now with a song entitled, Have Thine Own Way, Yahweh. Have thine own way, Yah, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after the will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own way, Yah. Heaven on way, search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, young, wash me just now, as in thy presence, humbly I bow. Heaven on way, young, heaven on way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power of power, surely is thine. Touch, touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way, oh, have thine own way. Hold on, my being. Absolute sway, 
Shall 